We now know, thanks to new interviews and news, that Valorant started development in 2014. That's when Riot begun coding, that's when they had the team assembled, and the work started going underway. That means as of now, in 2024, that's a 10-year time frame for Valorant's lifespan. I know we don't know it since back then, but we can use early access footage to dive into a lot of small details, and that's what I want to do. Like here, this is the first prototype for Killjoy, and we can actually zoom in and see all all these various icons with abilities that no longer exist. Like, what is that hammer? Is that pot what the swarm grenade look like? Here, there was a randomly flying chicken, but that's not the only thing to dissect. Look at the bottom left-hand corner here. We can see the only thing that was consistent was the turret. The other abilities just went through different things. The center one looks like some sort of sonic ability that Deadlock has today, or at the top, this is a lot more reminiscent of what Counter-Strike looks like. Here we can see early Haven. You can see it's just basically untapped textured, but even when you want to slow it down and kind of realize where you are on Haven, it's extremely difficult to figure out. You'll also realize the entire graphic design of the game was different. Now I understand that graphically, of course this was incomplete, but the art style itself still showed me that they were going for that Counter-Strike vibe. They were probably going to polish it in a Counter-Strike vibe. Just look at the abilities and UI. Again, sharper angles, and I'm not saying that it was going to end like this, of course it wasn't, but still Still, the overall visual style is giving me Counter-Strike vibes that maybe they would have polished more like how CS2 is today. Valorant, of course, deterred from that and went full cartoon, which makes it a lot more unique, and I'm personally glad they went for it. Now, around this time, as things started to polish up, you can see here these boxes further prove my point with the whole Counter-Strike vibe. And at this point, they were working on servers, latency, bullet registration, and a lot of the technical aspects of this game. And there's no way to actually put a perfect date on this footage. This definitely has to be after a lot of the redesign. So the time gap between what you just saw and this is probably massive because you can see Sova pretty much fully textured, how we know him today. We can see the Ares, which still does look different, but it's still the Ares. Also, this buy menu is of course very different. We're gonna have to slow it down and keep reopening it. A lot of the guns were different. The suppressors were initially supposed to be able to come off again like Counter-Strike. And you can see the body armor was presented on a full model instead of just a small icon. Here you can see the kill banners, the way they were going to be, which like pillars that came up low key, that's actually a very cool idea. And again, while Riot did go more cartoony, Valorant's color design and overall ambience was still very different. They leaned into cartoon heavy to the point where lighting was more aggressive. There were orange boxes, more textures going on. And if they kept continuing down this route, the entire game would actually kind of look better, but that's not what they wanted to do. They wanted to lean into cartoon, but then simplify things. And that's the Valorant we now know today, which is a lot easier to see. The operator scope was a full on sniper scope. And at this point, this is also what they revealed to the public, but that didn't stop them. This next one is very early access footage. Look at this buy menu. Look at how the numbers of credits were highlighted differently. We can see again, no suppressor on the Phantom. So even at this point, this is where a content creator had alpha footage. Footage, he still planned. They still planned for the suppressor to be removable. Even the ghost in the top right, as you get a kill, didn't have a suppressor. That was a key mechanic that they changed almost last minute. Absolutely insane. Also, small key point, the FOV of the game actually changed before releasing in June, and that's where the Valorant we know today was officially brought to life. Year one of Valorant was important, right? Knew they gotta get players locked and loaded, so we got all the love in the world. The game came out immediately with Ascent, an entirely new map, and still one of the most beloved maps till today, which is also kind of insane. You can see the door in some shots didn't have lighting, and in the other shots did, which is interesting. Then they came on swinging again with Reyna, still to today, pretty, pretty controversial, but when she first released, everyone was calling her the most broken agent in Valorant. Then they came down one more time with Elder Flame. Now, I'm not going to be covering skins in this uh, series because I don't think they're that important or that interesting, but skins at this point were still very hype, and I know they are still today, but Elder Flame was just another level, right? The fully animated Elder Flame Dragon set still hasn't been replicated till today. Then they dropped 
Deathmatch. Deathmatch was very important. Still not implemented the best. No one, uh, most people can agree, like Deathmatch still isn't implemented the best, but they did. They did it. They did it. And alongside Deathmatch, we also got Killjoy's release, which was also controversial. Oh my god, it was infamous that people said they would even quit Valhiko or something. Went crazy with the fact that there would be a turret in the game. And to be fair, till now, she's still powerful and annoying, so there was some validity to it, but she still fits into Valorant's roster, like it or not. Following this, we got Icebox in October of 2020, and man, did it look different back then. I know now we see it after all the reworks and stuff, but this is pretty nostalgic. People didn't really love Icebox, and I could see why. Sky came flying through into the scene. You know, rest in peace. I know she's nerfed quite heavily now, but Sky was very beloved and still reigns supreme till now on the Agent tier list. As the year came to a close in winter, we got Snowball Fight back when Riot still cared about us players and gave us seasonal game modes with some creativity in the back of their mind. Oh man, this actually makes me bitter when I see it. When I see it now with all these like little gift boxes and stuff, I used to play with people who were casual and they're like, wow, Valorant has so much potential. Look at all this cuteness and fun happening. And then, oh my god, dude, terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible to see where the game has gone, but it is what it is. While the game was still good, we got some winter game modes. In 2021, I want to speed run it a bit. Changes are mostly in order, but there are a couple out of place, so if you realize them, good for you. Yoru came onto the scene as one of the most creative agents in Valorant for obvious reasons. He was just insane in every aspect. I know he came out weak, and most people agreed on that, but no one denied his creativity, and it actually sparked a bright future for agent designs in Valorant. Eventually, he got a rework, but that's later, and that rework did help him bring him to the top, or at least a little more playable, not the top. He never touched the top, but it is what it is. And like I said, it sparked hype for agents in Valorant because Astra came out in 2021 as well, and same idea, a lot of creativity, right? Going into an entire different zone to place down stars from above really pushed what Valorant will become in the future, right? Showed there was no limit on what they're willing to try out and do, and I respect them for that heavily. 2021 also got two new game modes, which was Escalation and Replication, both in their own ways, very, very fun. Of course, Replication, you're all one agent throwing down a ton of abilities at once, which is extremely enjoyable, and Escalation, which is Valorant's take on gun game, which is still in the game today, unlike Replication. Man, what happened? Still no one knows, right? Like, backpedaled on being fun. It's like so weird, right? Regretted being fun and heavily backpedaled. Instead, we got Breeze. <laughs> Breeze, oh man, Breeze, Breeze, Breeze. Breeze came out in 2021 and of course received countless amounts of reworks as you know. But after that, Riot added a leveling system, believing that this was supposed to kind of keep players engaged because levels mattered. No, of course, of course they didn't, they didn't. Something that Riot continued to do fantastically well was agents. KO came into the mix with a brand new style of ability, which was suppression. Only removing abilities wasn't something that was in the game, and it was the one thing I will continue to praise Riot for. Chamber came swinging through and dominated the meta for far too long, but outside his future, he also was very unique. I know that sounds weird, and I know a lot of people say Chamber is not unique because mainly his abilities are just guns, but he's also the only agent where the abilities are mainly guns. Fracture came out after that, and it's been a while since we've all played it, but it was also a very unique map in the way it was designed and people spawning in the middle. Till now, it's the only map that has a rope system underneath it and a spawn point which is smack down in the middle. But as we cross over to 2022, I gotta give Riot yet another W because Neon's release was absolutely fantastic. The idea of a speed agent is something that most people, especially duelist mains, aren't gonna get excited about. Even non-duelist mains wanted to try her out. But slipping through the cracks, it also went both ways. Fade's release in 2020 was fantastic and had duelist mains even wanting to try Initiator. Her overall design from visuals to abilities was super unique. The one thing, and I hate to repeat myself, that Riot does amazing is both the scenic style of maps as Pearl came out right after, as well as the uniqueness of the 
agents. Also, I decided to use this pearl footage that Riot shared with us because look how HD it looks. And man, imagine if Valorant looked this vibrant. It's kind of gorgeous. I know it's not the greatest for competitive integrity the same way Harbor isn't the greatest for competitive integrity because if you pick him, you're throwing your game. Regardless of his lack of power though, Harbor also came out quite unique, at least in visual design. Maybe a little bit too bare bones on his overall abilities. Harbor definitely has potential and I do hope to see a massive rework in the future. But then we hit 2023 and things get shaken up quite a lot. 2022 is pretty dry, but 2023 came out with Lotus at the start of the year. And Lotus is the second three site map. And we didn't get one since Haven, which came with the game. So this was very, very exciting. And to be honest, I think Riot did fantastic. Then they just up the ante with the uniqueness they knew harbor missed the mark so they came swinging with gecko's release playing little pokemon pals inside of valorant i mean till now gecko is extremely unique and very great as an agent i absolutely love gecko even though i don't play him myself i still love his release i always loved his release and i always talked highly about what riot was doing when it came to agents and they honestly hit it out of the park again with deadlock and i know when i say those words people might rage a bit no deadlock is not strong enough she needs a minor rework and a lot more buffs to make her good but her design her ultimate her uniqueness is truly there when it comes to just adding new things to the game like a freaking cocoon that pulls you in i've praised it for a long time this visual that you're watching on screen is freaking cool it is fantastic and every time an agent's added to valorant right has a good chance of making us go wow Something that they're not as great at is their game modes. I was extremely happy with Team Deathmatch, and it's still my favorite game mode till today when it comes to the casual side of Valorant. And it did get released in June of 2023, a great way to start off the summer season, as now you could grind a great warm-up before heading into Ranked. Something else that followed through was not just a level system, but the Kingdom Credits. It is so far from perfect, but the Kingdom Credits was a huge good addition to Valorant. I don't personally love the things you can actually just buy with the Kingdom Credits, but a lot of people do get nice little things that used to only cost money, and now you can do it just by playing the game, so to me it was a great addition nonetheless. Premiere came out in July, and also face level great addition i think it had a lot more hype early on i don't hear many people talk or care about premier ranks nor the rewards so it is a little bit unfortunate and i would like to discuss it more in the future but for now premier kind of missed the mark overall and i think riot has some work to do when it comes to adding things to the premier system then sunset came out in august so yes if we're talking about June, July, and August, it was action-packed for Valorant. The map Sunset was introduced, and I still think it's one of the best maps till today. Keep it simple and let the agents do the talking is the key point of Sunset, but I know a lot of you hate it, and that's fine as well. ISO, another unfortunate release, but yet still a very unique one. From playing aim labs to sustain yourself to getting an entire shield and teleporting to a new dimension, he is a perfect example of what I was trying to say earlier. A new agent release, even at surface level, can make us go wow. It can get us excited. It can get us wanting to hop back into the game, but hopefully a rework or buff is on the horizon because he isn't quite there yet. Then Valorant released another map in August, but it was a team deathmatch map, Drift. I think overall this is a net positive and it's one of the first things Riot did in a long time for the casual players outside of the initial releases, showing that they will add some content to the casual releases is fantastic, and I hope to see some more unique game modes in the future. Then from August all the way to January 2024 till the next year was pretty silent, but Riot did come swinging through with the Outlaw as well as map changes. It was a massive patch, but the star of the show was the Outlaw. It didn't hit the mark exactly, but it's safe to say everyone was still hyped for it the amount of people using the gun when it first came out was very exciting and when riot takes risks like this that completely alter the game it's a huge benefit and i hope to see more of it in the future then you know another little key point on skins i said i wasn't going to mention skins and that's because maybe the only other one i should have was when the zed collab came out but clearly it didn't fruition to much other collabs nothing in the pop scene instead we got the most expensive skin bundle yet yeah instead instead we're seeing prices inflate without much going on 
on. <laughs> and then to top it off, the final skin change, which was important to be fair, are the VCT team capsules, allowing you to support your favorite team, almost like jerseys and wear them in game, which is still a huge net W for the pro play. Are they overpriced and not that amazing? Yeah, but it is what it is. I do hope to see betterment of these skins in the future, but now you're all caught up with the history of Valorant.